Biswas and uh, I'm working in Royal Free Hospital, uh, Hampstead, London. So today I'm going to talk about mixed germ cell tumor and I gave a title named as a complicated tale of an 11 year old female. So moving forward, uh, let's run uh, through the anatomy and physiology. Of course, we know that uh, the internal genital organs of a female includes vagina, uterus, fallopian tube, and the ovaries. So these are really very essential because of the um, furthermore procedure process of the life where the woman gets pregnant and of course carry on the life. So the anatomy of ovary uh, consists of several glands and also have a single layer of cubical cell known as uh, germinal epithelium. So it's Dr. a misnomer as... Hello? I know, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, could you share your presentation, uh, the larger view? Uh, because uh, here we can see just the first slide. So you... Um, I thought uh, it's, it's, uh, it's visible here. I Okay, let me just uh, cancel yeah. it. And... Use slideshow. Start it on slideshow. Yeah, slideshow. Oh, okay, okay. So sorry. Okay, so is it visible now? Just a second. Let's see if uh, you will turn. Not yet. If you go over from home, one, two, three, four, five, six, slideshow. Uh, yeah, I... No, move over to the right until you go to slideshow. Yeah, yeah. next, animate there. Hit that and hit from okay, beginning. So, Go back oh, okay. to from beginning. Yeah. Yeah. So is it visible now? Did you click that? Double yeah. click from beginning. Oh, okay. Is it visible now? It's still on ordinary. Is it is it the uh, slide with mixed germ cell tumor? No. Oh. Okay. So you need to click that. Mm. Uh. Should I share the entire screen then? Uh, this, uh, let's see. I'm trying to share the windows now. It, are you able to see now? Just the small slide. So try to kick, click that button from current slide. Double click that. Over yeah, left. This one? Left, left. Yeah, this one? Yeah. This one, right? So double click. Yep. It's not working. No. Okay, let me just try the other method then. Maybe this would work. Um, hopefully. Uh, so sorry. Are you able to see now? Just the small slides. Okay. Is it visible? Yes. Uh, okay. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> uh, should I start uh, again, like from the beginning? Uh, it's up to you. So. Oh, okay. I just uh, made a good morning slide, and of course, good a good afternoon there. And I was going, uh, I'll just run through you for, in a short statement till the time we, we just left in the last. So I'm going to present uh, a, a small talk on mixed germ cell tumor uh, with the subtitle of a complicated tale of 11 year old presented by uh, Anupriya Biswas from Royal Free Hospital, London. So uh, are you able to see this slide, anatomy and physiology? Yes. Oh, yeah. Perfect. 
So uh, as I've told you that we have internal, that women have the internal or genital organs that include vagina, uterus, fallopian tubes, and the ovaries. Why I'm saying you this? Because in further slides, we will be talking about this in detail. Then um, we all, uh, the ovary has a covered single layer of cubical cell known as germinal uh, epithelium. And also the substance of the gland consists of outer cortex and inner medulla. So the, uh, it's a misnomer for a germ cell and it's not derived from the layer. So the single layer, it's not derived from that and it's also known as the germ cell, the ovary. So um, the gland consists of cortex and medulla. Then uh, we are running through the physiology of ovaries. So the ovaries are paired sex glands, or gonads in female, which are concerned with germ cell maturation, storage and its release. And secondly, it's uh, stereo stereogenesis. So we will need to uh, keep our mind on the first point because in coming slide, we will be discussing about it in more detail. Then each gland is oval in shape and pinkish gray in color. And also the surface is scared, uh, scarred due to uh, reproductive period. And it is measured about three centimeter length, two centimeter in breadth and one centimeter in thickness. Each ovary present two ends, tubal and uterine, two borders, mesoverian and pre posterior and two surface. Uh, which is medial and lateral. So this is like the, the broader uh, picture of which you can see in the front. And then this is the ovary, which shows about the different places and you can see the cortex there and also the medulla there. Moving forward, so now as we are going to talk about the mixed germ cell tumor, so what is, uh, what is this disease condition? So mixed cell germ cell tumor is a very rare type of aggressive cancer consisting of more than one type of germ cell component. The most common component uh, reported was the disgerminoma, followed by the endodermal sinus tumor, teratoma, choriocarcinoma, and embryonal carcinoma, respectively. This case, like the this case, current case, is focusing on the combination of dysgerminoma and endodermal sinus tumor, which is yolk sac tumor, along with the hearing loss as the side effect of the chemotherapy in the patient. The germ cell tumor, by name, as it suggests that it is a tumor of the egg cell in female, and uh, it happens in males also, but in sperm cell. So mid germ cell tumor is termed so because of the characteristics which is involving at least more than one type of germ cell tumor. So like more than one is like mixed germ cell tumor. If it's one, so we'll specify the tumor. To the date, the most common combination of mixed germ cell uh, reported is dysgerminoma and endodermal sinus tumor, whereas the rarest counts embryonal carcinoma and immature teratoma. It is primarily found in children and adolescents. And as we are moving forward, uh, let me tell you the patient, uh, when she was diagnosed with this case, she was just 11 years old. In, in a young patient where preservation of fertility is desired, laparotomy for surgical staging and unilateral salping or, or ferrorectomy is done. If there is any suspicion of involvement to the other ovary, bisection of the contralateral ovary and excisional biopsy should be done. And this is uh, quoted from the doctor with the... Uh, for which we tried to care and we discussed about this further intervention about the patient and that's how it ended up in my slide. So the tumor is sensitive to both chemotherapy and radiotherapy and hence sometimes it is difficult to preserve the fertility of the patient. Systemic chemotherapy is the treatment of choice where fertility is to be preserved even in the presence of metastatic diseases. Then what is dis dysgerminoma? This germinoma is the most common and malignant germ cell tumor, which is about 30 to 40 percent. It arises from undifferentiated forms of the germ cell. It is often 5 percent associated with just genetic gonad. It may be associated with choriocarcinoma or endodermal sinus tumor. Now, endodermal sinus tumor. Uh, let me run through you very quickly. So this tumor arises from primitive yolk sac and it is mostly observed between 15 to 20 years of age, but the patient was 11 years old. So that's why it's, it's named as complicated tail. Uh, it is the second most common, which is 20% malignant germ cell tumor of the ovary and endodermal sinus tumors are unilateral. It happens in only one germ cell and are usually solid more than 10 centimeter in diameter. As we have said, the, the we did look after the 
the normal uh, measurement of the ovary and you can see that it's 10 centimeter in diameter so we can know how much uh, it is increasing its size so it is highly malignant and spreads to the adjacent structure rapidly like from the ovary it will go to the fallopian tube and the, to the uh, uterus it is composed of the yolk sac endoderm and extra embryonic metasoblast also it is uh, usually associated with dysgeminoma then the prevalence so prevalence of the mixed germ cell tumor is among ovarian cancer. It is reported to be the second most common type of tumor constituting about 15 to 20% of which 3% are the malignant ones. Usually the book picture depicts the mixed germ cell tumors have symptoms of abdominal pain, constipation, lump over lower abdomen or back. Puberty is attained at very young age and severe pain. But in my patient, I have seen the patient uh, having alopecia and also hearing loss, like conductive and sensorineural uh, hearing loss. So the classification, as we have discussed earlier, the germ cell tumors of the ovary, which is 20 to 25 percent of all primary ovarian neoplasm. Uh, the types are like dysgeminoma, endodermal sinus tumor, embryonal cell carcinoma, polyembryoma, choriocarcinoma. Okay, and also teratoma. And in teratoma, we have three phases like immature, mature, which is also known as dermoid cyst. And the, la, the third one is monodermal, or which, which can be, as it is monodermal, so it can either be struma, ovary, or carcinoid. Then we have mixed forms, which is like combination of A to F, like from dysterminoma to the teratoma. Anything can be mixed, maybe two or more than two. Then we have tumor composed of germ cells and sex called stromal derivatives, which is gonadoblastoma. And second is mixed germ cell, which has the sex called stromal tumor. But we are not going to discuss about the second one, but from the first one with the combination of the germ cell and the carcinoma. Uh, so moving forward to my case, as we have now gone through the anatomy and physiology, so I hope it will be very easy for us to understand what it went through. So the chief complaint was, uh, was a patient was uh, 11, a patient who was 11 years old uh, was admitted in Acharya Vinobhavi Rural Hospital, India, on 29th of uh, January 2021 for the first chemo cycle for the first cycle of chemotherapy, as the patient was diagnosed as the case of mixed germ cell tumor a month back. The patient at the time of admission had complaints of abdominal pain, backache, and relapsing fever. The patient currently had no other complaints. She was not aware that she was having any kind of carcin or any kind of cancer or mixed germ cell tumor. So the history uh, backdates to the time when patient had a history of uh, fever for 15 days. Then the patient's family reported it as a typhoid, and the documents are not available because in India still the lay public uh, treatment are given, for which the patient was treated at home. And because she was given a lay public treatment, the tumor board discussion was done on 30 12, 2020. So, and later, uh, and later her histopathological report confirmed to have mixed germ cell tumor on 4th of January, 2021. Till the duration, she was admitted to the hospital from time to time for the packed red blood cell transfusion. Of course, she was losing blood. So we have to give the blood, uh, the blood transfusion as well. The patient had no other history of hypertension, diabetes, mellitus, and, or, or tuberculosis, or asthma, or thyroid disorder. Even she didn't have any kind of uh, suspected typhoid uh, episodes as well. It was just like the verbalization of the parents and a lack of knowledge about the cancer in the rural places. So history of any past surgeries were not uh, present until and unless the patient had her first operation ever done on 30 of uh, December 2020, and the name of the operation was exploratory laparotomy with right ovarian mass, removal of with right-sided salpingotomy with infracolic, omnectectomy with partial supracolic, omnectectomy with peritoneal biopsy, and it was done under general anesthesia. So as you can see, it is too much to note it down. But the thing was, we tried to extract every uh, sample from the ovary, uh, from the tumor, so that we can get to the proper investigation at the end. Moving forward for the physical assessment, it was found that the patient had right ovarian mass from ultrasonography on thorough exam examination from head to foot. And a visible lump was noted over the lower abdomen. On further palpation, it was found to occupy the hypogastrium region and bilaterally iliac region extending around two to three centimeters above the umbilicus. The child then looked thin 
weak and had dull look because of the deprivation in her health and she was well oriented with the time place and is and was cooperative she um, like she was very uh, she was a, she was just 11 years old so she was bright and uh, of course till now she didn't have any kind of neurological disorder furthermore for the investigation we checked the blood test um, uh, the 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 previous one when i took this case it was 9.7 gram and also the total uh, leukocyte count was one uh, 10300 per cubic mm and platelet was uh, 5.49 lakhs per cubic mm and the tumor marker was afp which was 520 and the carcinoma 125 ca 125 the tumor marker was 909 unit per ml then the peripheral smear was done and no hemo hemoparasite was seen rbc's the red blood cells appear normocytic mildly hypochromic and the rbc's were seen platelets increase on smear APC was uh, five lakh forty nine thousand cells per uh, mm cube as per cell counter, and ultrasonography was done for the right ovarian mass. So for the histo histo uh, sorry uh, sorry for the tongue twist so sorry. So for the histopathology report, we can see that the acytic fluid along with thirteen containers containing right ovarian mass, right ovary with mass, right fallopian tube, bubble deposit as well as residual nodules and pelvic deposit were sent, of which the report indicates features suggestive of mixed germ cell tumor. Uh, as I have discussed about the operation which took place and the fluid was too much that 13 containers were filled. So we collected all the uh, enlisted uh, samples from there. And also we did the audiogram uh, after her fourth chemo cycle where we find out where we got to know that the right ear was having mild conductive hearing loss and the left ear was having mild, sen mild sensorineural hearing loss. And uh, we can see the reports in the AVBRH, the Archer Avenue Rural Hospital. We have this kind of handwritten um, uh, reports where we can see uh, how it was noted and when it was noted. Moving forward, uh, as per the drug study, we tried to calculate all the um, chemo drugs, uh, the chemotherapy, like epotocide ep and cisplatin, cisplatin. So you can just see how the body weight and everything was calculated. Then the drugs, of course, uh, when it is chemotherapy, so we do the pre-chemo hydration, then pre-chemo, then chemo drugs. And of course, then again, it goes to the post-chemo, then it goes to the post-chemo hydration. And the, hence the chemo cycle is completed, like one chemo cycle in second. Then as per the medical management, of course, we transfuse the red blood cell, then the pre-chemo, post-chemo, and of course, the chemo hydration, a chemotherapy. And that's all the tablets which is like bleomycin 15 mg IV on day one and day eight. Then we also gave dexamethasone, hydrocortisone, ondacetron. Then uh, on the chemo, for the chemotherapy record, the first cycle of the chemotherapy was given on 3rd of Feb 2021 to 10th of Feb 2021. Then the second cycle of the chemotherapy was administered from 3rd of uh, April 2021 to 10th of April 2021. It was done for every like for uh, for a complete week for seven days. Then the third cycle of chemotherapy was administered from uh, 20th of May 2021 to 26th of May 2021. And the patient had a fourth chemo cycle uh, from 29th of June 2021 to 20, uh, to 6th of uh, Ju July 2021. The fifth chemo, uh, although the fifth chemo cycle was not really happening because till then almost all of her um, uh, tumor, uh, the tumor cell uh, was having uh, the disappearance from the body because of all the procedures she was going through and all the treatment she was getting. And then she was on the symptomatic treatment. So for the surgical management, the patient underwent her first surgery on 30th of uh, December 2021 after consulting the responsible physicians, pediatricians, because she was on the pediatric as well as the adult, uh, uh, adult cancer cell, uh, cancer department, oncology department. So the patient was prepared with antibiotic coverage for pigtail procedure in order to drain around 500 ml of acytic fluid from the peritoneal cavity. 
Also, during the procedure, a yellow white lump of irregular friable with solid consistency and hemorrhagic yet necrotic areas were seen and palpated. Hence, surgeries were carried out on need based. Then finally, the patient had her exploratory laparotomy with right ovarian mass removal, with right-sided sulfingectomy, with infracolic omnectomy, with partial supracolic omnectomy, with peritoneal biopsy. This is what we discussed earlier. Meanwhile, the required samples were collected in 13 containers according to the protocol and was sent to the histopathological examination. So now, uh, uh, of course, we do uh, look, uh, we have discussed about the medical management and everything related to it. Coming forward to the nursing management, uh, this case belonged to the medical, surgical, oncology, gynecology, as well as the pediatric concern department. Therefore, the nursing care played a vital role in every aspect as well. So the main, uh, the three main highlights which we can discuss is the pain in abdomen. Of course, the, the pain is uh, like we cannot even score the pain because it's too severe. So we, did, we diagnosed it as in like pain in abdomen related to gross ascites, secondary related to lump in the abdomen. Then the patient will con uh, was complaining about the vigorous health, hair fall, which was alopecia related to side effects of medicine, secondary related to stress. Uh, sorry to not write there, secondary related to stress. Then the third one was hearing loss. Uh, the mixed hearing, uh, the patient had the mixed hearing loss, as I told you, sensory, neural, and conductive uh, hearing loss related to the consequences of the chemotherapy. So as in conclusion, we can say uh, why these things has happened because of uh, a lack of knowledge to the rural places of the India. And of course, uh, all over the world, we should be making everybody aware that the problems are not only situate or not only situated or related or can be affecting uh, the adult uh, women but also the women uh, also the uh, girls who has not even at attained their menstruation because this lady uh, this uh, patient she didn't attain her menstruation so in order to carry on forward with her life we should be making aware the, of the parents and it should not be a matter of fact a uh, matter of shame or fact or anything like that we should try to emphasize them to come out and speak up. And the second thing is, of course, we need to treat everything by being a team and of course, uh, induce the and enhance the life of the patient. Then here are my references. So does anyone have any question? Please feel free to ask and guide me further with your feedback. Many thanks, uh, Dr. Anupriya, for your uh, nice presentation. Let's see if we have uh, any question for you. Okay. If uh, anybody has question, please ask because I'm going to reveal the secret which I have told you that I, I thank Mr. Uh, sorry, I th thank Dr. Milos as well for that. I don't think. We have a question for you, but uh, I will kindly ask people if I uh, have any question, they can also drop in the chat box for you, so. Oh, okay. As, like, I, I'm still starting my journey as in research, so I look forward oh, to your okay. guidance and feedback. But, um, so here's the thing which I made. I hope it's visible. Oh. Is it visible? <laughs> yes, it is. So, uh, as per your topic, the theme, I was not aware. So uh, in the morning here, I tried to make some of the art where this is like the breast. Uh, we can see that uh, about the breastfeeding and also the gynecological aspect. This is an abstract painting, uh, which of course I look forward to do a donation in any of the uh, hospital nearby. No. Oh, very no. nice. Very nice. <laughs> very so, nice. Thank you. And that's, thank you so much for your painting.